Cardiac arrest. We have a working fire. Whole traffic shots fired. Now the big the big overtone is obviously the the cultural issues with racism at the time, but some of the hidden stories that I thought was fascinating. Um, talk a little bit about them with the the politics of the conflict between the Philadelphia police, who had been I guess handling the ambulance service at the time, and the conflicts between nurses and physicians, who I think you had said none of them wanted this job, so they literally had to in a, in a gospel mar- narrative go drag people from anywhere off the street and bring them into the party, so to speak. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, yeah. Pittsburgh, obviously. Um, but it's, it's a funny, um, it's a funny thing how it went. I mean, for the police, it's a very specific story, which is essentially, you know, from 1965 backwards, you know, what you have is, is sort of three options more or less, depending on where you live in the country, you have funeral homes, who respond to your emergencies. You have the volunteer fire department or you have the cops. And in the city of Pittsburgh, it was the cops. And these are guys, these are generally older guys, um, not terribly well-trained who had an old, you know, what you'd call a paddy wagon. Mm-hmm. With, if they had any equipment, it was old equipment. And they had, you know, a canvas stretcher, like a World War II style canvas stretcher. And that's who showed up. Well, they didn't provide very good care as was, you know, uh, evidenced by a number of very high profile deaths, but uh, they, you know, they were employed. And so when Freedom House came along, they represented, you know, a, a, an existential threat to, to the guys who are working there. You know, like this, this, this is it. These guys succeed and you lose your job. And so there was a lot of animosity for that reason. Um, there was also a lot of animosity between the police and Freedom House because, you know, these were guys from, a low income minority neighborhood and particularly in the sixties, um, there was a very acrimonious relationship between people living in that neighborhood and the police. And of course the police had all the power historically had always had all the power Mm -hmm. and really bristled at the fact that here were these guys not only taking their jobs, but on emergency calls, kind of telling them what to do or at least trying to. And so the police pushed back and there are a lot of instances of, you know, conflicts on scene, which of course, you know, these paramedics are, are never going to win that fight. Mm-hmm. So that was uh, an ongoing thing throughout. But, you know, the larger sort of lingering story that has existed for centuries is this story of what do you do um, in an emergency that takes place outside of the hospital? And the medical community had never had a good answer to that. You know, it, it tried in fits and starts. And throughout the years, they had put doctors in ambulances, they had put nurses, they had put, you know, just drivers. Um, and they could never really find something that worked. And part of the reason was, you know, a lot of the medical community just didn't think medicine could be practiced out there, you know, in the street, in somebody's home. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just it just was not a doctor's uh, perception of, of what medicine was. And so when this came along, there's definitely this idea of like, well, wait a minute, hold on. This is where people are innovated. This is where EKGs are rip, uh, read. This is where drugs are given. And they, you know, they, they, they did not have very much faith that this thing could be carried out, particularly not by laymen. You know, th- th- these aren't, you know, four-year educated professionals. This is, you know, this sort of paramedical wing that was brand new and, and, and they just didn't mm-hmm. get it. Nurses didn't either, you know, N- nurses uh, you know, it's a little bit different today, but it still exists. You know, you bring a uh, patient into a hospital, there's still this funny relationship between paramedics and nurses. There's this, you know, on the one hand, there's a side by side relationship. It's a kind of hand in glove, but there's also a little bit of contention, you know, mm-hmm. who, who does the better job, whose job is more important, who, who should you listen to? Um, you more, know, they, they, you know, more often nurses are unionized and paid two to three times for basically a similar scope of practice that, you know, paramedics do. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the, the pay tension, the cultural tension, you're bringing us patients now, which I hate to say it, but it, it is a reality sometimes with, you know, the frustration mm-hmm. of the abuse of EMS. This is your host, Christopher. If you like today's episode, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Also click the bell for notifications on future content. If you haven't already, check out our website, the UFCshow.com, ways that you can support us and find us on other platforms. Until next time.